Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to honestly quite a surprising video. I came across this and went, actually, I have no idea how to build an igloo and that is exactly what I hope the National Field Board of Canada can teach me and if anyone can teach me, I also reckon it's them. So many questions. The Eskimo word igloo means house, and to the natives of the Canadian Eastern Arctic, igloo is the snow house. Wow. Built of snow blocks cut from the hard packed drifts, an igloo provides the Eskimo with shelter during the long winter months. Easy to build once you know how, his home is compact and strong. Yeah. The igloo gains strength from its ingenious design. After the first row of blocks has been put in place, one block is cut to form a sloping surface. The second row is started on this slope and the blocks what? built up in a continuous spiral, the what? key to the whole structure. Wow. Well, first of all, I just want to take that back and to see that. I never would have expected it, but it makes so much sense, just that shape under tension that isn't held in different layers so it can just crumple on itself. It's constantly and continuously held all the way around. Like they show, just continuously built all the way up. I mean, even the fact that you were somehow I guess it's just how you cut it, like that top ring when you're at the almost like 70 degree mark or maybe even 45 degree mark and it's still not collapsing on itself. It is so impressive and I wonder how many generations did it take just to perfect this art. I mean, it's also interesting because obviously I did ask how old it is and they're still saying the word Eskimo. In order to describe the Aboriginal inhabitants of Canada and meanwhile in the 21st century I've been told that it's more an offensive derivative instead of just a descriptive derivative now. However, coming back to the video itself, had also just told me that igloo is a direct translation from a native tongue and I can totally get behind that. It totally makes sense as to how and why that entire dialect would have been given to this because I can only imagine this kind of structure isn't seen anywhere else in the world. I don't believe I've ever heard of Vikings or anyone else making a structure like this and so it truly is just incredible architecture and design and science and mathematics all wrapped up into one just because that's the hand that nature was dealing them. On the west shore of Hudson's Bay, the low rolling terrain offers little protection against the bitter cold of the northwest wind. Oh, man. Tupac and Akiutak, having left their families in the igloos of the winter camp, are coming into the post to trade. They look forward that. to a mug up of tea and pilot biscuits at the trader's house. Look at that. What a way to get around. Oh, the so two dumb. Eskimos admire the wooden buildings of the white man, but for their own dwelling, they will build an igloo. Right. First, Akiutak, the elder of the two, selects a suitable site. With his probe, he tests the yes. snow. Oh. It must be hard packed, and yet not so hard that it will not cut. It must not be layered with streaks of soft snow that would cause it to break in handling. And there must be sufficient good snow in one place to provide all the building material for his igloo. This isn't always as easy as it seems, for the average snowfall of the Arctic is less than in the temperate regions of Canada. Right, I guess... Yeah, that would make sense. Based on what people have told me, it gets less, not cold, but less humid when it gets colder because all the moisture just gets squeezed out of all the air. And so I wonder what the average snowfall is. I mean, really, the years and generations of science and knowledge that goes into building one of these, it's just incredible. Like you said, just has to test here and know that it has to be hard, but not too hard because you don't want to break your back to trying to slice into the ice. You know, they don't have chainsaws like I've seen people do these days. No, no, no. You're there. I can only imagine with like a little pickaxe of some sort i hopefully they show it or i guess they do seem to have some sort of a knife or cutting implement to be able to really just chew through it it's pretty incredible but no just to even have the volume that they need ah oh, honestly i'm just always so impressed by this level of knowledge for them to just be able to pull up i could only imagine anywhere and have a house in maybe a matter of hours hopefully not a matter of minutes so that's just going to be pretty insane every single house should be an igloo if it's a matter of minutes but just to be able to just pull up anywhere and Honestly, I, I doubt that they would be admiring the houses. I mean, yes, it's a permanent structure, so in some regards it's probably going to be better and in others not, but really, I, especially given the time of when this video would have come out, I think that's a bit of putting words in people's mouths, admiring the wooden structures of the white man. I, uh, I don't know about that one, Chief. Like all good architects, they use the material found around them. Mm. The snow will be both bricks and mortar. Yes. Packed hard by the constant wind, it can be cut by a snow knife, 
or ordinary handsaw into yeah. blocks of any size or shape. Yeah, look at that. That's awesome. Oh, just score it. Wow. <laughs> it's like chopping marble or something. You see these big excavators do it, but now there's just a human. The first blocks are cut from a rectangular trench, which often serves as the entrance tunnel to the completed igloo. A row of heel marks is sometimes used as a baseline for the first row of blocks. The igloo must be nearly circular. Otherwise, when a construction nears the top, the wall will collapse. Yes. From a lifetime of living with it, the Eskimo knows his snow. Providing it is of good quality, he can build the igloo entirely from snow found within the circle of the walls. And that. since the blocks are taken from inside the circle, the actual floor of the igloo will be the depth of one block below the surface of the snow outside. Oh, which I can only imagine provides greater insulation and windfall as being below the surface means that, I mean, if nothing else, you're going to have a higher roof line, so you don't have to build it as high, but you also get more standing room and everything inside. It's just, it's just thought down to a T, isn't it? You use the blocks inside to give you more floor space. You use even just the heel marks, so rudimentary in what it does, but just when you've done it a million times, I'm sure you see these people drawing perfect circles. These guys would be able to draw a perfect circle with their heels, no doubt. Just a couple of marks, chop them out, done. Oh, it's just so impressive. It really, really is. I mean, it does then make me wonder why and how did they arrange for this entire thing to be filmed? I mean, are they just doing it for the sake of the filming? Did they actually pull up? Because I never know what to really trust with the voiceover. Like I said, they admired the House of the White Man well, sure, okay, that's what you can say. But they also just said that they pulled up to trade, but I don't know, that entire sled seems pretty empty to me, unless they're just selling pelts. So I, I really don't know. I would love to know. There are so many questions surrounding this video, but it's, it's just what the history is, isn't it? After the first row has been erected, the cut to form the sloping surface is made. The next row there starts on this slope, and the upward spiral begins. When building an igloo for an overnight shelter, the Eskimo works quickly. But for a more permanent dwelling, he takes his time, fitting each block carefully to the previous one and to the one below. Yep. A single Eskimo can build an overnight igloo in 40 minutes, or he can spend two days constructing a large, comfortable dwelling for himself and his family. Wow! 45 minutes! I mean, I said maybe, hopefully not minutes, because then every single house in the world should be made like this. I mean, people wait months and months and months for their houses to be constructed. And meanwhile, yes, it might be a temporary structure, but even two days compared to months and months and months. It's not the same, I get it, but it's just insane that you just go, yep, tent done. 45 minutes later, like building an entire solid structure in the same time that some people aren't even able to put up a tent in. Just a very quick pre-assembled, put two poles in and people can't even do that in 45 minutes. To cut the entire thing out, wow. Uh, it's just, oh man. I would honestly love to give it a go. I mean, by the same metric, I saw how cold it was. I mean, it's clearly going to be cold, but it's not snowing. And so in my mind, it's always, it's a hard one to kind of really get the temperature, but you can see the frost on the coat. I mean, perhaps that is also the pelt, but even just around his lips and on the beard, just the moisture just freezing instantly. Oh, it's, it's a rugged, rugged environment that takes a certain type of person to live there. And this is the people. These are the reasons that they exist here. The Eskimo is a nomad. His need is for a temporary home, for who knows how long he will stay. Yes. His home gets dirty, he moves out and builds a new one. If hunting is bad, he goes off in search of food, building his new house where game is plentiful. The Eskimo yes. builds his home around him, always working from the inside. He has cut the first row of blocks so as to have a slight inward lean, which will gradually become more acute as the walls grow higher. Yep. Being right-handed, Tupac works in an anti-clockwise direction. Left-handed Eskimos build in the opposite direction. I wonder what the ratio of the left to right-handers would have been in these historical communities because so much of what people use in terms of the left or the right hand is just from what they've seen. And so if someone has just seen their entire igloo from the time they were born be built with their right or their left hand, that's probably what they're going to be doing. But I also imagine that it's probably going to get weaned out. Like I believe, what is it? It's like 80% or something like that is right-handers in the world. It's pretty high. Or at least it is definitely the majority. And that is why so many things with mouse and keyboards and phones and whatever else are just built for right-handed people. And so I wonder, does it make any difference in terms of building an igloo or is it just the spiral shape? Because that would be awesome to go, ah, lefty righty and even just the fact that they work from the inside ah oh, it's just closing yourself in is usually not something you want to do but it clearly works look at that it's just too easy for them man oh. as the inward lean becomes more acute 
Greater care must be taken in fitting the blocks together. Yes, the edges of each block are beveled so that it gains support from the previous one and from the one below. Yep. Blocks will vary in size, but are usually about three feet by two feet by four inches thick. Okay. I wonder, see, even that would be a particular thing. Why is it that size block? Why is it four inches thick? Why is it that size? Gradually, the spiral design in the inward lean of the blocks produces the familiar rounded beehive shape. This that. rounded shape is another excellent example of good use of the fundamental laws of architecture. Engineers and architects have found no better way of building an igloo. It has no corners and no waste space. See what I mean? Just generations of knowledge just perfected. It's just that easy. It's Although insane. the temperature is 40 below, the exertion of building causes both Eskimos to perspire freely within the snow walls of their almost completed igloo. Wow. That's... Setting the last few blocks in place is a ticklish job. Unless oh. well fitted, they could easily fall in. The Eskimo's only construction tool is his snow knife. He uses it for cutting the blocks, shaping them, and fitting them together. Look at it. Originally, it was made of bone or ivory, but now he buys a steel one from the trader for about the value of a fox skin. Okay. Man. Still using snow from inside the igloo, the last block is shoved out through the narrow opening and trimmed to fit. Not until this key block is inserted and fitted, like the keystone of an arch, will the igloo take its final strength. Oh, After man. it has been completed, the warmth of the inside, combined with the wind on the outside, will cement the blocks firmly together. That's what I was about to ask. When he said that it doesn't take its final shape, I was going, surely it melts, but in a good way, just melting this entire structure together. And maybe that is why it's four inches thick, because then you do get that insulating layer, but that outside, maybe 10, 20 mil, can just melt enough in the sun just to be able to just really cement the entire thing together. And I guess make it wind tight to a degree that it wouldn't otherwise be able to. I mean, even the fact that, like they said, architects have tried to make it better and they just can't, it's just, it's so perfect. It's the perfect little shape that I guess would be kind of infinitely scalable. I can only imagine. I mean, maybe on a, if you got big enough, having a perfectly flat roof, it wouldn't be able to support. It would need a minimum of degrees over time. But man, it's just impressive that, like they said, you can build it for one person. You can build it for a family. You can build it in 45 minutes or even less or even more. Whatever it needs, it fits the design criteria for the elements that they're living in because they said it's minus 40, which I believe by the time you're getting that cold in Fahrenheit, it is basically the same thing in Celsius. Either way, it is cold, cold, cold. And so the sun is going to be doing its best, but man, like you said, they can just perspire inside it. It is that insulated and it's snow. It just seems so backwards as you just go, hang on a second, you are surrounding yourself in a cold material in order to keep yourself warm, but it's just the internal atmospheric conditions. You can warm it up, you can do all those things and the wind chill factor. That is always the major thing people can stay warm but the wind will sap you dry hang on a second what minus 40 is minus 40 i don't even believe that it continues like that no look minus 42 is minus 41.111 and minus 43 and it continues from there so wow i guess i also learned that minus 40 is minus 40 if nothing else it just proves the fact that these guys are insane in terms of what they are able to accomplish they are just masters of the craft minus 40 degrees living in it year round i cannot do it the igloo will be strong enough to support a man's weight although a sharp blow of the fist might punch a hole in the snow wall. Wow. That's, oh, it's even weight-bearing, I guess, for snowfall as well. Look at that. Just slowly carving it down just until it fits. Like the man who paints himself into a corner, the Eskimo has built himself into his house. Oh. Cutting his way out, he forms the doorway of the igloo. Interesting. Look at that. The last construction job is chinking. All cracks on the outer surface are plugged with snow so that no drafts can reach the interior. It has taken the two Eskimos one and a half hours to build their igloo for the night. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, smooth it all down. Get every little last bit out so then that wind just cannot touch you. That little door even. Like I said, the amount of trial and error that goes into just something that is apparently now so simple. Going, I'm sure someone tried to build it with the door so they just didn't have to worry about the snow collapsing on themselves. And they could get out and they didn't have to chop it in later. But no, they know what to do. They just build it all the way up and then chop themselves out. It really just, they make it look so easy. But if I tried to do it... I would have just put stacks on stacks on stacks and it would have immediately folded. There is no way I could have done it without some extra structural supports and some branches or something. I honestly would have just been completely lost about how to go about it and probably just buried alive in the process. Oh. Caribou sleeping robes and extra skins to cover the sleeping platform provide perfect insulation against the cold snow. Yep. 
course. Oh, all those pelts. Aki Utak and Tupac settle snugly inside, using a snow block to close the door. What? A hole in the roof serves as a ventilator and heat control, while fresh air comes from a small hole near the door. The short daylight hours of the Arctic winter draw to a close. After a meal of frozen fish or walrus, the dogs bed down for the night, nose buried under tail, thick coats protecting them from the cold, each in his chosen spot on the snow. Igloomi Oko says, Aki Utak, it is warm. This is my home. And it's very, very impressive. I mean, even the fact that the dogs, I mean, I would love to just build them one as well, but even the fact that the dogs can just survive in those kind of temperatures, everything about these kind of environments are just so impressive to me. It is so alien, it is so everything, but without a doubt, is it impressive? Just even the fact that they brought the door with them, just, or not brought the door with them, but just maintain it, one extra block just to have a door, just to close it off. I mean, interestingly enough, the classic igloo shape in my mind has a little tunnely bit off the front, I don't know what to call it, and this, from what I saw, didn't. And so I wonder, I can only imagine this would be the traditional one and how that entire thing changed or how that entire thing works and, oh man, there is always just more to learn in this world and this kind of thing is so impressive. Just speed, the skill, the knowledge, the power, even just lifting those big blocks, I can only imagine they're not going to be light, but they make everything look easy.